All right, guys. Welcome to the Frisco Report. All right, we're going to talk about the day two selections, the Cowboys. Day. Diggs, number 51 overall. Okay. So that's a good pick. Cowboys needed to and cover them. And All right. Defense, you know, obviously they got CeeDee Lamb in the first round, which was a huge, huge pick. Then we went to second round, and we got Traylon Diggs. We needed a corner, and he just fell into our laps again. We didn't have to move. And... We didn't have to move up to uh, to get him. He just fell right into our lap. And then we turn around in the third round, and we draft Nebel Gallimore out of Oklahoma. So pretty good day overall. Lots of star power for the Cowboys. You know, looking at all three picks, you can't go wrong with this. You know, it's uh, you know we're talking about getting the blueprint for the Cowboys championship run. I think they're well on their way, Mike. What is up, man? How do you feel about this draft? Day two. Day two, yes. Cowboys, Cowboys. I mean, knocked it out of the park. And if you look at, you know, the, the second round, I mean, defensive players were falling off the board left and right. But guess who was there at 51, Joe? Trayvon Diggs, Stephon, Biggs, uh, Stephon Diggs' younger brother, cornerback Alabama. This guy's six. Guy's 6'1", 205 pounds. Uh, yeah, he had four interceptions there at Alabama, and people are finding that a concern. But I, I trust in this in this coaching staff, Mike Nolan and his crew, to get Trayvon Diggs where he needs to be at the NFL level. Um, I, I, I love that move there by Trayvon Diggs. And the, the still of the day, in my opinion, is Navel Gallimore. The, this guy was the third fastest guy at the NFL Combine at his weight uh, the, the guy's a beast. His one, his one step, the way he gets around guards, he can play. I, I see him playing one. He mainly pays the, the plays the three. This was a steal in the draft. The Dallas Cowboys got their baconator at three hundred and four pounds, Joe. Yeah, for real. That's that's what really stood off the page. You know, when we're talking about him. He ran a four point seven nine for a guy of that size, that stature. Uh, I mean, that's incredible. You know, he's projected as a three tech. So, you know, shots shot across the bow, Tristan Hill. If he's not going to, you know, get that career going, they got Gallimore here to, to take that spot. And, and that's what the draft is. We're here to replace people. You know, there's no real allegiance to Tristan Hill. Obviously, I'm not saying he's going to go anywhere. They just drafted him. But um, it's good to see that the Cowboys – added another premium pick to the defensive line, Mike, and, um, you know, throwing Gallimore into that mix. You know, we only have Dantari Poe on a one-year deal, and you have, a, a you know, an obviously an, an aging Gerald McCoy. So hopefully, you know, I think the Cowboys are kind of banking on Tristan Hill and, and Gallimore being, you know, primary pieces to this new-look defense. What, what's your feeling on, on why they drafted Gallimore here, Mike? Uh, you, you need to. I mean, you, you look at the philosophy, and as soon as Mike McCarthy came out, uh, they, they, they went to the, the, to the senior bowl, and right off the bat, Stephen Jones said, if Mike McCarthy wants bigger guys, we got to find them bigger guys. So this was the philosophy Mike McCarthy wanted on this defense, and they took care of that today, Joe. Yeah, they did. They did. Let's backtrack a little bit and talk about Trayvon Diggs. You know, we, we hit it out the park with CeeDee Lamb, and then we turn around and get another – Premium pick here, I feel like, you know, and Trayvon Diggs, who, 
by a lot of people, was a first-round uh, graded type of player, and we'll get him in the second at 51. How do you feel about the secondary right now as, as we stand right here? There's a lot of competition in there. You know, a lot of the Cowboy fans, including myself, was penciling Jordan Lewis to be your number one corner. Yes, they did sign Anthony Brown to a three-year deal. Anthony Brown, to me, Joe, his primary job would be in the slot. Right now, Cheeto Bay, I think, Jordan Lewis, Trayvon Diggs, they got some competition there. Who is going to be, quote-unquote, the nickel corner? Because if you're the nickel corner – you got a demotion somewhere. So I, I and it might be Cheeto if I'm gonna say this, because I, I really think Trayvon Diggs can beat out Cheeto. Yeah, yeah, I think it's um I th- I think they wanna have Cheeto there on the outside and, and feel that feel the uh, spot vacated by Byron Jones. I think that's really what they wanna do. But um yeah, man, definitely there's competition across the board. I like that. We have a lot of depth now. You know, uh, Brown gives you that flexibility playing the outside, played nickel. Jordan Lewis, when given the opportunity, played really well. So I'm really hoping that Jordan Lewis actually wins out that slot position and uh, Trayvon Diggs wins the other position. Um, but, yeah, man, competition across the board. May the best player win, but for sure, Trayvon Diggs, I think he's your future there and on the outside, on the boundary there for cornerback and uh, solid, solid pick, man. I'm, I'm pumped about it. I really, really like that pick. Yes. I mean, if you look at the corners uh, that, that went before him, you know, the Chicago Bears got uh, Jalen Johnson and then, you know, a lot of defensive ends was leaving and, and Grant Delpit and – you know, you, you look at it, this right here, I really feel like the Dallas Cowboys went BPA on this move. And uh, it was, I think, Joe, it was the correct move here with with Diggs. Yeah, it definitely does have that, you know, best player available feel to it, slash for a need as well. They, you know, they, they, you know, it wasn't a high need, but, you know, you could play a game right now with with the corners that you do have, but it, it felt like, you know, like a, like we've been saying this whole off season, if you can get better at a position, make that make that draft pick, make it happen. So, you know, it's uh, it's interesting how this fell. You know, where some of these players are getting drafted. I think the second and third round have had some surprises, um, as far as yeah. who went where. Yeah. Zach Bond was uh, was a huge surprise to me, Joe. Um, you know, fallen. Yeah, the injuries are a concern, uh, but I really thought he would go in, in the late second, early third. Uh, but I mean, he really dropped. Yeah, Zach Bond, and, and you know, they they mentioned the uh, the diluted sample and, and that kind of thing. So you have to wonder, you know, is there something more behind there? Is it is it uh, maybe not necessarily substance abuse maybe performance enhancing you, you you never know I mean we can't really say we can't really judge the player it could have just been that he drank a lot of water who knows but it was surprising that Zach Bond fell as far as he did I think that one really stood out uh the Eagles they get Jalen Hurts to back up uh you know um Carson Wentz I think that's more of a statement for Wentz can he stay healthy this could be a Romo or Prescott situation because we know, you know, Carson Wentz is always getting hurt. Hurts could go in there and take over and not, not give up the, the spot. So I thought that was an interesting pick there in the second round. Definitely. That was definitely an eye raiser. Jalen Hurts going uh, to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, you know, when I seen that, my, my eyebrows went straight up, Joe. And, you know, it is – testimony to Carson Wentz's health you know that they can't go around and go get Nick Foles again to go win him a Super Bowl you know or in order to close out the season Carson Wentz he got to stay healthy um and how about switching gears here to the New York Giants drafting Xavier McKinney yeah yeah I was about to say let's let's look at some of these targets that we had ended up going elsewhere yeah Xavier McKinney uh, basically you're you're replacing one Alabama safety with another so Giants, they like those Alabama safeties. They had Landon Collins. He left. Now you put in McKinney. Uh, you know, I think it's a good pick for them. But uh, 
you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it looks. Eater Gross Matos, he went to the Panthers. That was another yes. target there for the Cowboys. Panthers are doing pretty good in, that, in those first two uh, rounds. You know, they got to uh, Derek Brown, the, the beast defensive tackle. They turn around and get Gross Matos. So that defense, they bolstered that thing up, you know. Uh, yeah. Grant Delpit was another target of the Cowboys. He went to the Browns. The Browns, so the career might be over before it gets started. I hate to say it, but the Browns <laughs> is the place you go where your career dies a slow death. So You know, it's funny you say that because my wife was like, hey, I'm watching these, you know, the, the, these guys' reactions, you know, get, getting drafted. She's like, do you think they're authentic reactions? Do you think, like, if they could pick where they want to go, if, if that was the team they would go to? And I said, listen, I'm sure they're humble. <laughs> And, you know, they, they made it to the National Football League. But she was like, well, what about the Browns? And I had nothing to say after that. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's, it's just a, a career black hole, man. You feel bad. It seems like they always get, like, the big names and the, and the careers die on the vine over there. I feel, I feel bad for a lot of them. Um, A.J. Epinesa went to the Bills. I think that's a, Winfield. That's a good yeah. pick. Yeah, yeah, Winfield yeah. went to Minnesota Vikings, or excuse me, Tampa. Yeah, Tampa Bay. The Bucks. Denzel Mims, Josh Uche went to the Patriots, so you know they're keeping that pressure. They they like those outside pressure guys, so that that made sense. You know, it's funny um, did, 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 talking about Denzel Mims real quick. That's who because Cowboys stole C.D. Lamb away from the Eagles, and Denzel Mims was on the Eagles' minds. Uh, you know, and then they go Jalen Hurts, and <laughs> you know it, it is what it is at that point, I guess. But uh, you know, Denzel Mel, he he was a heck of a wide receiver, and I'm glad he didn't wind up with the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a little bit of karma. We got the the better half of, of the karma, though, for sure. They got Jalen Rager. I felt like that was a reach in the first round. I thought that was. I thought that, I thought he went really high. Um, let's, let's, let's brush up on the third round here. Let's take a look at some here. The Redskins, you know, looking at our rivals, uh, they got Antonio Gibson from Memphis. Eh, mm -hmm. <laughs> not worried about that. Uh, Justin Matabuke was another Cowboys interest. He went to the Ravens. Ravens seem to be having a pretty good draft. And then finally, Zach Bond went in the third round to the Saints. So he yeah. finally... A little bit of a free fall, you know. He went, he dropped over here to the Saints, but you know they they liked him enough to take. And they traded up for him too to go get him from the Cleveland yeah. Browns. The Raiders drafting three receivers <laughs> in the first three rounds, so you know they got they got their main guy in the in the first round, and then here in the third round, back to back receivers, so kind of. Kind of crazy, <laughs> but it is yeah. what it is. But that yeah, was that, great, man. I, I like seeing those the offensive players come off the board because I knew I wanted to go defense, Mike. I wanted to go defense after we knocked it out in the first round. So Gallimore, man, that's a, that's a heck of a steal for us again, man. Huge steal. Huge steal. Yeah, Jordan Elliott, he, he went uh, to Cleveland. You know, yeah. I, I was – I had him in like – three of my mock drafts, you know, and, you know, yeah. oh, I wish him luck over there. Yeah, man, that's that's another one that you got to feel for because this, yeah, we have been talking about Jordan Elliott from the get-go, and, uh, yeah, he, he lands in Cleveland, so I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens with his career there, but they'll follow it, you know, if he ever becomes a free agent. Cowboys at least know what he's about. Cameron Dancer, another one the Cowboys liked. He went to the Vikings. He kind of did a little bit of a free fall a little bit going to the third round. McTeldon Ajeem went to the Broncos. That was an interesting pick there. And uh, taking a look here at some more of these. Tanner Muse, I think he went early. He went to uh, the, the Raiders in the third round, so... I think that might be one of the Raiders' better picks, but I mean, I think you know he was he was being mocked anywhere from like the fourth to fifth round, but 
that's kind of how the draft goes, man. You know, you get a lot of these, you know, projections, and then when the draft really comes, you get some players going higher than than expected, and some go lower than expected. Um, yeah. Terrell Burgess, you know, we talked about Terrell Burgess. He had he had a, a bit of a free fall, you know, falling all the way down to the end of the third round, pretty landing with the Bruce. yeah one hundred in the fourth pick, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and he, a, the New England Patriots double dipping in tight ends, Joe. They haven't done that since Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski in 2010. Yeah, it looks like they want to try to get back to their, their bread and butter. You know, um, I still don't understand why they made that trade. I guess I guess they wanted to get something out of Gronkowski if he wasn't going to play for them. So I, I guess, you know, that that does make sense. But, yeah, man. It seems like they have a formula in place. Now, the question for the Patriots will be, can they execute it with the quarterback? Mm, they had, the, You know, it, I don't, I, they already traded a lot of their later round picks away, you know, trading up for these tight ends. I don't even know how many draft picks they got left, but they might have to start trading some 21, 2021 draft picks, maybe to go up there and go get uh, Jake Frum from Georgia. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. They they haven't addressed and who really cares, but you know, this this is a fun conversation, but they didn't uh you know, they haven't drafted a quarterback. You know, there was a lot of rumors that maybe they wanted Jordan Love, maybe they wanted Hurts, maybe they grabbed James Morgan, he's still hanging out there. And uh I think he could be a steal for somebody. So he's still dangling out there with the Cowboys taken. I know the Cowboys had an interest in him. From like you just said, Mike, he, he's available, and he's got some buzz around his name. So, we'll see. How are you feeling now? Previewing day three, final day of the draft, rounds four through seven. It'll be a, you know basically a, a draft marathon. What's your feeling on uh, where they go from here, Mike? Any any players that, that you like that are still available that you you think the Cowboys might take a look at here? Uh, who who are your guys? Who, who are you thinking, Joe? Well, you know, I, I, I feel good that we drafted um, defense. I'm wondering if they're going to take a look at, uh, you know, the center position. Cushenberry left, but um, Tyler out of Wisconsin, he's still available. If they don't take um, a center, you know, here pretty soon, I think then you, you can probably – Pencil in McGovern as the center. You know, that's kind of been the, the talk. Um, but a big clue will be whether or not the Cowboys draft a center at some point. You know what I mean? So if they don't, McGovern's going to be the guy probably. And then you got to live with Connor Williams at the left guard position and hope that he can stay healthy. So a lot of moving parts in the draft. Um, there's a lot of tight ends still available. Harrison Bryant is still out there. Um and some of these other tight ends. So I, I, I would be, I think, you know, we might see a tight end, uh, you know, a, a run on tight ends here soon. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Harrison Bryant, uh, I had him in my uh, mock draft. I had him going in the fifth round of the Dallas Cowboys in, in, in our final mock draft. He's still out there. Um, Hunter Bryant, the tight end, he he's still out there too. Uh, I mean, they're, they're – K.J. Hill, the wide receiver out of Ohio State, who has some speed to him, uh, a special teams guy maybe, he, he's still out there. Uh, 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 the the end from Utah, Brady Ani, uh, he, oh, he's Bradley still Anai? out there too. Yeah. So Ani, mm-hmm. yeah, excuse me. So, I mean, there is some – there is some there there is some defensive pieces. There is some special team score if you want to take care of Bones Fossil, uh, you know, to come I mean Cowboys haven't had anybody since Dwayne Harris. And, you know, I think KJ Hill can go in there and kick off some returns for you along with Tony Pollard. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did go another receiver, just somebody to really give you some extra juice there in the, in the return game. Um, that's a good point. I do, um, I do like Jason Strobridge. He's still available. I would really, really hope the Cowboys are considering him here in the fourth round. But will he last to one twenty three? I don't know. That's going to be, 
that's going to be a tall order. Um, so we got we got the fourth round pick, and then we got two fifths. And we talked about this a couple times. Will they draft? Will they will and deal? You know, will they trade one of those picks for a player? Will they trade one to move down and get some more sixth and seventh round picks? We'll see what they do there. But I think Curtis Weaver. Be- <laughs> yeah. If I was to go on, on a pick, Curtis Weaver, defensive end out of Boise State, that would be my guy, Joe. Yeah. It, it, and, it. And, it, and, it, and if the Cowboys think he's slipping away, you, you definitely go 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 get him. 6'2", 265 pounds. He could play the right end position. He could stand up, whatever you want to do. If you're going to run a 3-4 hybrid, Curtis Weaver can do that for you. Yeah, Curtis Weaver. Um, I like Jonathan Greenard. I think he's still available. I know, I know Zuniga went off the board. Um, but I believe Jonathan Greenard, the other Florida end, is still available. Um. Let me double check that because that would be somebody to keep an eye on. He can give you a little bit of, um, you know, some pass rush. And, and we're talking fourth round already here. So you're getting players that, that are going to be, you know, they're not the prettiest uh, prospects at this point. You, some of them are going to have, you know, issues here and there. So you're, you're trying to really hone in on players that have traits that you can mold. And I think with a player like, Strobridge and uh, yeah, Strobridge for North Carolina is still there. Yeah, those types of players have you know a little bit of juice in them that they can get some pressure, put them in the mix with Jalen Jelks and some of these other guys that are going to be competing. Um, and any other players that, that you're looking at, Mike? Well, I'm looking at at Strobridge right here at 275, 6'4. If that, that don't scream one tech. I don't know what does, and you know, it, it, let's let's say they get a Jason Strobridge. You, Trishan Hill's out of here some way, form or fashion, whether it's a, a late a late off season trade or something, because I I don't see how he fits on this team uh, if they do go get a guy like Strobridge. But you know, uh, one of your guys is still out there from Notre Dame, Troy Pride Jr. You know, six he, a, a corner there, a slot wide receiver, maybe. Uh, you know, it could be a backup to a backup or something, but you know, Notre Dame products are still out there too, Joe. That is really one that that surprised me, and um, you know, and I did have him between the third and the fourth. In one of my earlier mocks, I had him as a second, but you could see some some mocks were kind of just kicking him down further and further. And yeah, here here we are now in the fourth round. That would be something to really consider that that's a good point mike because now you're looking at what's left cornerback is getting kind of dried up you know and 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 pride jr he's a he's a solid solid cornerback man i know he doesn't have the ideal height but you could plug him in and have him be your next um slot corner you know he's 5'11 absolutely 198 um so yeah that, that's a good he one measured there. in that at six foot at the combine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Oh no, Jonathan Greener did go. He went to the Texans. Okay, so he is gone. He's not available anymore. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> what what positions? I mean, do you look at to see? Okay, let, let's take a chance on this. On this pick, I mean, what positions would you be looking at as we continue uh, four, five, six, and seven tomorrow? Yeah, I would take a look at um, where you could, uh, you know, at this point you're looking at at depth and competition and taking flyers on people. So you might even go after somebody that has off-field issues. You you might look at somebody that uh, is recovering from some sort of surgery. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like a, like a Marcus Bailey, the Purdue linebacker coming back from, you know, ACL surgery, but he looks really good in his recovery. He's put a lot of videos out there before the injury, this guy's sideline to sideline. So maybe you roll the dice on a player like that and you kind of bring him along and then, uh, you know, bring him slowly along. But this is a guy that if healthy Marcus Bailey 
is a top 50 player. You know what I mean? He's still available. So these are the types of players I would look at, you know, see if you can hit on a guy and, and get value for it, like a Marcus Bailey, somebody like that. I love the, the tight end that you're talking about, Mike, and we've been covering him for a while. You know, Harrison Bryant. Yes. You know, and I know some fans don't want to go tight end because they feel that we're set at tight end. But, I mean, mm. how comfortable are you that we are set there? I, I feel like you can get better there, at especially with the ones outside of Blake Jarwin. I know we gave him the extension. He's not going anywhere. But I feel like you can get better than Schultz and you can get better than, than Bell. You know what I mean? So that wouldn't be a bad idea, man. It wouldn't be a bad Absolutely. idea at all. And the positions, yeah, but yeah. Let's let's start looking at some of these special team ace type players. Um, we we've, we've mentioned J.R. Reed. We've mentioned Fuller from Ohio State. There's a couple of these guys out there that they fill those roles that they can give you backup and depth, but they can be aces and the special teams. So I'm I'm ready to see what we do, man. I'm I'm really excited to see what we do in the fourth with the two fifths. In, uh, in that kind of thing, Mark, you got any final thoughts here as we head towards day three? Yeah, no, just my final thoughts is the positions I'm looking at is defensive end, you know, with Curtis Re- uh, Weaver still available, James Lynch, uh, just Nick Nick Coe out of Auburn, a lot of defensive ends that you could potentially go in the fourth round. Dak Prescott, fourth round, Tony Pollard, for fourth round. These guys paid, uh, you know, a, a, a huge part in our offense. Maybe they could play a, a play a huge part in our defense, Joe. So uh, for, fourth round, I'm looking with the expectation of what Will McClay's been providing us. I can see a fourth round pick starting for us, Joe. And you know, Curtis Weaver, Nick po- Nick Nick Coe, those guys right there, defensive end. If you want to go, if maybe because maybe they won't reinstate Randy Gregory or Auden Smith or something. Have a backup plan. Get these guys in here and get that rotation on the D line going. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Mike. I mean, we're all kind of assuming that, uh, you know, with the new CBA and this and that, but you just never know with Goodell, man. You know what I mean? And uh, you're right. You know, we we should we should protect ourselves a little bit there. My goal, my goal is to get the replacement for Crawford. So if we can get Strobridge, we can get um, even Curtis Weaver, you know, a fellow Boise State guy, he would fit that role because – you know, what I like about Weaver, he doesn't have your high-end elite speed, but he has the power, and he can play with leverage, and you can move him inside, you can move him outside. He's, he finds ways to get to the quarterback. His sack production is legit. So, you know, sometimes you get these players that don't really pop off athletically or with, like, you know, their workout numbers, but they find ways to get to the quarterback. So I think Weaver, that's a good name to keep an eye on, Mike. I, I do like that. I, I agree. Well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because I mean, we're talking fourth round now. You know, it's it's uh, you're looking for players now, and Cowboys met with him. They have an affinity for Boise State. So yeah, we <laughs> gave you guys a lot of interesting names. We'll see what the Cowboys have up their sleeve. Do they stay put? Do they trade around? Whatever. Uh, do they pick up a player with one of their fifth round picks? We'll keep an eye on it, guys. Um. But uh, that's it for day two of the NFL Draft. Thank you guys for checking out the Frisco Report. If you hopped on live, appreciate all of you guys. And if you catch this on the replay, shout out to you guys for checking us out. All right. Mike, let these guys know where they can find you, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Dallas Cowboy Football News on YouTube and on Facebook. DCF News 1 on Twitter, guys. Give me a follow. Give me a DM on any of those platforms because that's where it starts, guys. That's where the conversation starts. Joe, heck of a day, heck of a draft so far with these Dallas Cowboys. Let's carry this momentum into day three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's carry that momentum indeed, indeed. Guys, you can find me on YouTube at Cowboys Blog. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram at Cowboys Blog Net. For myself and Mike from Dallas Cowboy Football News, we really do appreciate you. Make sure you give us a five star review. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, the Google Play Store, and Podbean, obviously. And we'll catch you guys for the next podcast tomorrow for the Frisco Report after show day three. We'll be back tomorrow, guys. Peace. Peace.